morning guys I'm a little frazzled this morning because before I even got out of bed I was alerted by one of my friends on Facebook that he had received an inappropriate message supposedly for me I knew immediately that I had been hacked so I got up without coffee um, to see what I could do about it. The only reason I had a clue as to what was going on was that a friend of mine had been hacked a few days before. Otherwise, I probably would have been clueless. But anyway, so uh, I have a new Facebook account <clears throat> and I'm trying to get, excuse me, and I'm trying to get things restored. The only thing that I wanted to do was to share the Word of God with my friends and with people who might not know the Word of God. That's all I wanted to do. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. <clears throat> Since uh, my Facebook account has not been fully restored, I am recording this broadcast on my YouTube channel in the hopes that I can transfer it um, to my Facebook account. I believe that I can. And what's so funny about it, I actually think the auditory quality, starting from this van uh, vantage point, is going to be better <laughs> than the auditory quality I had before. Anyway, <clears throat> I want to just refocus on what is important. And that is the Word of God, because I did have something that I wanted to share today, and I'm still determined to do it. Because there's nothing more important than the Word of God. The Word of God is an incorruptible seed that has the life of God on the inside of it. And that life cannot be corrupted. The seed itself cannot be corrupted. That's why it's incorruptible seed. We are born into this world of corruptible seed, the scripture says, and born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God. And that incorruptible seed, which is pure and perfect and holy, makes us pure and perfect and holy and innocent. So, when you're born again of that incorruptible seed, you're actually more innocent than when you were first born into this world of corruptible seed, which is an amazing but true thought. And, you know, I've been sharing a lot of things recently. I've been talking a lot about um, the seed and how when it grows, we know not how because it's in the ground of our heart and we can't really see what's going. We don't know. We know that it is prospering because it's alive in us, but we don't know how. And we don't have to know how. So looking at circumstances, whether they're good or bad, it's not going to really tell you anything. Uh, the only thing that means anything is what's happening in your heart. And only the Lord knows about that. The Holy Spirit knows how to prosper the seed in your heart, and that is what he does by giving you revelation of his word. So, um, I'm just so thankful for that process because the word says that that describes the kingdom of God, that it's like a mustard seed that when it is planted, it's the smallest of seeds, but it grows the biggest of trees. 
And it's just amazing. And the reason that I wanted to reiterate that and share that is because I had also uh, shared yesterday about an epiphany that I had because I actually began to think, wow, all of these things that I've been thinking about myself based on how I look and what I do or don't do or how I don't look or all of that, all of these things that I've been thinking about myself are not true. Now, and this, and the thing about it is, this was not something that I said in my head. This was a realization that was coming from my heart. Um, the first time that I've ever really, truly thought about it in quite that way, which is disturbing because it's disturbing to think that you've been on this earth for X number of years never mind how many, X number of years, and you've been thinking wrong thoughts about yourself the whole time. And I'm so thankful to have that revelation that even though it's disturbing, I'm so thankful to have that revelation that I have been having wrong thoughts about myself. Because... What that means is that I'm starting to doubt my doubts, which is a wonderful thing because the scripture says in Mark 11 that if you believe you receive and doubt not. So believing and doubting are two different things. It says if you believe you receive and doubt not. So what happened or what is happening to me, I'm so thankful for, is that I'm starting to doubt my doubts because all of these things that I have been sharing with you have been helping me as well. Where I shared about when we have a promise of God, we don't have to look for evidence of that promise in the flesh. Because the evidence of that promise is in the seed. F the faith that permeates that seed, that faith that's alive and that's energized by love, the perfect love of the Father, that faith, that living faith, lost my train of thought, that living faith, that permeates that seed is the evidence because faith is the evidence. It's all about the faith that's in the seed, the faith that's in the word, because the word, it says, my words are spirit and they are life. So it's the spirit of perfect love that's alive in that word and then in your heart and because it's faithful, it spills over into this realm. But it does so in a way that we know not how. We don't even have to know how. We just know that the word is alive and true and perfect and holy. So I just wanted to share that this morning. And um, of course, this will be on my YouTube channel. And uh, what shall I call it? Uh, let's see. Doubting your doubts, which is a wonderful thing. That's what I'm going to call it. Doubting your doubts. And it's not something that you can do with your head alone. It has to be a heart thing, doubting your doubts. And that's what's so wonderful to me this week because my heart has been doubting my doubts. Now, I'm going to put this uh, on my YouTube channel and then get it over to my Facebook channel. 
and uh, I'll talk to you guys later, and I love you. Bye.